Um, that's a good question. How are the clubs different? You really don't know until you start hitting the road. Uh, there's more in the United States, uh, more markets. You know, Canada's kind of, uh, there's a lot of people there, but it's, it's most of Canada is actually uh, scarcely inhabited. Uh, so it, it's uh, less markets to play in, so less uh, clubs. And we kind of do shows in a different style. I've noticed the more I play in the States, um, the, the style here is to kind of have the newer comic uh, on the MC, and then kind of the second comics, the middle, and then the most seasoned or, or the name comic is the headline. And in Canada, we, we switch that up. Usually the second most experienced comic is the MC because that's the harder job that no one wants. So the MC gets paid more than the middle in Canada and is usually a more seasoned act. And then the newer guy gets the opening slot uh, to, to cut his teeth on, but they don't, uh, they don't leave the heavy lifting to him because uh, <laughs> he's the new guy. Um, yeah, and the, the green rooms are nicer in the States and more plentiful. Uh, you guys buy more merch, which is nice. Uh, Canadians, they're very polite, but uh, sometimes thrifty. And uh, I think there's a little bit more uh, swagger in the States, a little bit more show off. So guys will come up and buy one anything just to, just to look like big shots. And uh, that's great. Keep that up. We really like that. <laughs>
if Squirrely Dan was in an online women's studies course, and I didn't know that that was the take they were going to use, but they ran with it. And several seasons later, they hired a friend of mine to play Professor Tricia quite by accident. And it was, uh, you know, definitely something that wasn't expected. Uh, Dan definitely changed uh, when I got cast. Uh, Squirrely Dan was originally written for Dan Petronievich, who plays McMurray on the show. And I've talked about this a few times. Uh, and and uh, Dan uh, Petronievich had to pass on, on the offer. He got offered Suicide Squad, so he couldn't commit to the shoot schedule. And so I was uh, choice number two. And uh, I, you know, if you really look at, at uh, Squirrely Dan's dialogue from the first season, he's a bit more lecherous. He's, you know, Dan is a... He's got stories of, of hookers and, uh, you know, and so I, I think, you, you know, it was written to be a little bit more McMurray-ish. And then when I came into the role, uh, I just sort of naturally softened him. I, uh, I made him, you know, uh, just a little bit of a sweeter character, less, less of a creep and more of just, you know, he wasn't being gross with Katie. He was just... Uh, like I pointed out with like the whole eyes appreciates you from the first season, Squarely Dan makes a point every episode of telling Katie something he appreciates about her that has nothing to do with her appearance. And everyone else just talks about how hot she is, but Squarely Dan every episode had a compliment for Katie about you know just how nice she was or how good she is at you know making sure that they eat food. <laughs> There's little sweet stuff like that. So, you know, I, I got to soften the character a bit, but uh, I, I can't take a, a, a lot of credit because it's mostly the writing that Jacob and, uh, and Jared have done and also, you know, the other writers like Risky and, um, uh, and John Torrens, who's written a couple episodes for us. You uh, know, a lot of people, the, the writers really bring the, do the, the body of the work and I just bring what they create to life. Uh, you know, I think that was definitely more so a, a season one thing. I know there was a lot of people standing that relationship. Uh, I think there's probably a couple Reddit threads dedicated to, uh, Squirrely Dan and Katie. I'm, I'm not sure if we're ever going to see that happen. Uh, you know, they've definitely, uh, uh drifted in, in other directions. Uh, Dan's already juggling Lavina Dick and, uh, and Ellen. So uh, I don't know if uh, if he's if he's got another hand to juggle Katie and uh, you know Katie I just don't think as much as she likes Squirrely Dan I just don't think she sees him that way I think it's more of a of a brotherly love with Dan at this point but people are big fans of those characters getting together I remember uh, after season one uh, Bell uh, gave a bunch of the cast uh, tickets to go see a hockey game. And Michelle and I happened to have seats next to each other, so we were splitting a popcorn and some people uh, stopped to geek out. They thought we were actually on a real date and were super excited. And it's like, oh no, we're just, we just got placed here by, <laughs> by the good people at Bell. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's not really hanging out because it's, it's at work for us. Uh, the the produce stand is is kind of classic you know and when when we know when we're doing the produce stand stuff when we're on the farm we know it's going to be a pretty easy day because uh we've at this point we're all pretty in sync with those characters and with ourselves so the banter and everything comes pretty quick and we can whip through a, a scene pretty fast and we're we're a show that's oddly efficient like we average about 12 and a half pages a day, which for TV production is insane. Most shows are about six, seven uh, pages and we do about you know 12 on the average. So we really just clip through it. And especially when we're doing the farm stuff, it's just the rapid fire dial dialogue, go, go, go. And you know, we, uh, sometimes we can get out in a half day if we do it fast enough. And uh, so I, I definitely like the farm for the uh, the efficiency of it because we know when we're there it's going to be a quick day, but uh, yeah, they're not really great hangout spots. You know, it's, uh, we either shoot at the at the farm or the the bars out in in the middle of nowhere, and uh, 
base camp is on the other side of a public school from the bar. So the bar's right next to a public school um, in real life. I, I always joke that when we finish shooting there, someone should buy it and name it the teacher's lounge. Uh, they'd probably get a lot of business, but uh, you know, uh, we're, we're hanging out in trailers. It's not, uh, <laughs> and they're not Will Smith's trailers. They're just, so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's all right, but we're, we're, we're there, we're there to work. <laughs>